Sam Walker walks through the Manhattan Cemetery, pushing the stroller with his triplets. The autumn leaves crunch beneath his boots. It's been a year today since Mira, his wife, passed away. Let's go see mom, he whispers to Alan, who nestles in his arm. Eric and Stan, the other triplets, look curiously at the insects fluttering around them. As they reach Myra's final resting place, Sam sees a man in his fifties cleaning the tombstone. Intrigued, he approaches when the man finishes his prayer with an ambiguous smile. What are you doing here? Sam asks, puzzled. Sam Walker, right? Says the mysterious man. I'm Daniel, an old friend of Myra's from Chicago. Sam furrows his brow. Mira never mentioned Daniel. I've never heard of you. Could you see the kids? Daniel asks, his voice trembling. Sam, protective, shows reluctance. I'm not ready to trust this stranger. I'm sorry, but it's not the right time, he firmly responds. Daniel approaches the stroller, looking at the children. They're precious. They have something very familiar about them. His voice breaks. That nose, those eyes, and the eyelashes, exactly like mine when I was their age. Confused and anxious, Sam doesn't know how to handle this strange revelation. Daniel speaks nostalgically, as if holding a long hidden secret. Sam looks up, his heart pounding. He's not prepared for what the stranger, Daniel, is about to reveal. Mr. Walker, I know this may sound strange, but I have to tell you something important. I'm the real father of these kids, and I've come to take them with me. What? Sam furrows his brow, eager to confront Daniel but holding back out of respect for the man's age. Trying to ignore him, thinking he might be crazy. Mr. Walker, please believe me, I made mistakes in the past, and now I want to make things right before it's too late. Let me take the kids with me. I'll even make you an offer you can't refuse. What are you talking about? Old man, get out of my way before I call the authorities. Sam tightens his grip on the stroller. But Daniel doesn't move, he begins revealing details about Mira that leaves Sam stunned. Mira loved disco and riding motorcycles. She had dark hair, enjoyed art and French cuisine, adored French onion soup and cream brulee, was allergic to peanuts, and had a scar on her right thigh. Is this enough? Sam shouts. I don't want to hear any more about my wife. Who are you? How do you know all this? What do you want? I've already told you. I'm the father of your children. I understand it's difficult, and I'm not trying to take my children away from you. But you wouldn't want to deny me my time with them. Look, I'm old, and they're all I have. I want them to come back with me. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. And stay out of my life. You seem crazy to me. Find something better to do. I don't know you, and you must be confused. Stay away from my children, Sam shouts. I don't want to hear any more about my wife. Who are you? How do you know all this? What do you want? I've already told you. I'm the father of your children. I understand it's difficult, and I'm not trying to take my children away from you. But you wouldn't want to deny me my time with them. Look, I'm old, and they're all I have. I want them to come back with me. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. And stay out of my life. You seem crazy to me. Find something better to do. I don't know you, and you must be confused. Stay away from my children. After a minute of silence, he quickly exits the cemetery with his little ones. Daniel's words continue to haunt him. While driving, Sam suddenly stops his car by the roadside, trying to gather his thoughts. What if everything Mira told me was a lie? How could she do this to me? He cries. Imagining Mira sitting beside him in the passenger seat, Sam needs answers and doesn't want to believe Daniel. But he can't ignore the detail of Myra's scar on her right thigh. Too precise to dismiss, he remembers the day he met her in the spring of 2016. Sam was behind the bar mixing cocktails when his eyes fell on Mira, the liveliest of her group of friends. Another margarita on the rocks. Please, she asks with a radiant smile. Mira doesn't look at him in a special way, just as a friendly young bartender. But Sam is already completely in love with her. He tries to impress her every night, rehearsing his smile and adjusting his black bow tie and gray shirt. One night, Sam's heart breaks when he sees her kissing another guy at the pub. He understands that Mira only sees him as a bartender. But one day, 
he can't help but approach her when he finds her crying alone in a corner of the bar. Miss, are you okay? Sam asks, seeing her boyfriend dancing with another girl. Makeup smeared by tears, Shaw and I have been together for six months. That man left me for that girl Lily. What does she have that I don't? I'm so sorry for you. Stay strong, miss. These things happen, and life must go on. Maybe he doesn't deserve you at all. It's his loss. Please don't cry. I'm always here as your friend whenever you need me, says Mira. Shaw nods, her teary gaze fixed on Sam before fainting in the seat. Sam helps her out of the car when they arrive home. Thank you, Sam, Mira says, smiling through the fogged car window. See you later. After that day, Sam and Myra's encounters become frequent. They fall in love, strolling through the illuminated streets of Manhattan and promising never to leave each other. She promises to stop drinking, and he vows never to abandon her. Sam and Myra's love story had only blossomed two weeks ago when she let go. The news of her pregnancy with triplets took Sam by surprise. Everything had happened so quickly. Though he wasn't prepared, the excitement of becoming a father overwhelmed him. They soon married in a private ceremony. And Sam found it strange that none of Myra's family attended. I only have my friends. My parents are no longer here, Mira had told him. Unintentionally hurting him, Sam didn't ask any more questions. Nothing mattered more to him than their new life together. He trusted her blindly. Now, looking at his wedding ring, Sam couldn't help but feel like it had all been a cruel joke. Daniel's words left him perplexed. I was naive. Everything she told me was a lie. Her love was just a game, Sam thought. Tears streaming down his red eyes. Suddenly, the little ones in the backseat began to cry. Disturbed and annoyed, Sam wished he could escape to a place where he couldn't hear their cries. Despite everything, he couldn't bring himself to hate his children just because someone said they weren't his. Confused, he decided to return home, still unsure of what to do. At home, Sam put the little ones in their cribs, changed diapers, and bathed Alan, Eric, and Stan while singing them a lullaby. He tried not to sound too sad. Later, while washing the dishes, he smelled something burning. Oh, what bad luck, he exclaimed taking the pan off the stove, then he ran to the bathroom, which was overflowing with foam, he had used too much detergent again. It always happens when I'm stressed, he muttered, watching the water overflow, it's time to go to the bar for my night shift, he decided. So, he called his neighbor, Mrs. Wills, thank you, Mrs. Wills, I'll be here until she arrives, he said, then went to check on his children, he found them deeply asleep. Sam felt consumed by sadness as he watched them. He used to feel like he could do anything for them, but now everything seemed bitter. Daniel's words echoed in his head. Why did you do this to me? Mira, I never lied to you or deceived you. How could you do this to me? Sam muttered, tears running down his cheeks, remembering that rainy night of anguish, not knowing where Mira had gone while their children cried. He somehow manages to put his little ones to sleep. Sam grabs his phone, hoping for some sign from Mira. Instead, he receives a call that sends chills down his spine. Yes. This is Sam Walker, he answers. Mr. Walker, we're calling from the station. Could you come over? We need your help to identify a woman's body. Sam's heart races when he rushes to the hospital after leaving his little ones with Mrs. Wills. His neighbor, at the hospital. They ask him to identify the body of a young woman found in a car accident that night. Time stands still as they lift the thin white sheet covering the body. Sam's world crumbles when he recognizes Myra's lifeless face. Later, it's revealed that she was under the influence of illegal substances at the time of the accident. From that day onward, everything changes for Sam. He feels numb, weak, and overwhelmed by the fear of raising his children alone. It's not fair. Why did you leave me alone with all of this? He murmurs through tears that turn into anger. Despite his distress and anger towards Mira for leaving him with such a huge responsibility. He looks at his children. Sam promises himself that he will do everything possible to give them a good life. After Myra's loss, Sam doesn't date anyone else. His heart still belongs to her. 
he still wears his wedding ring and feels that Mira is somehow still with him. I still love you, Mira, and I always will, he whispers to the ring, as if she could hear him. Sam becomes the sole pillar for his three little ones, taking on the roles of both mother and father. He dedicates every second of his life to them. Between work and childcare, he almost forgets what it means to have a moment to himself. His social life disappears, now everything revolves around his children. However, after discovering that he is not their biological father, he starts to doubt if he can see them the same way and if it's worth investing so much in them. I can't do this anymore. I just can't, Sam stammers. Pushing his chair forcefully, the noise wakes the children. Without thinking, he leaves the house, abandoning his usual courtesy with Mrs. Wills, who arrives to care for the children that night. At the pub, Sam finds no peace. After his shift, he returns home and goes straight to his room, searching for Daniel's card without stopping to look at or cuddle with his children as he used to. Minutes later, he leaves his room and sees them, his three little ones gesturing and babbling, Daddy, asking to be picked up. His heart sinks. How could he even think of leaving them? I can't live without you guys. You are my everything, he cries while dialing Daniel's number. Hello, is anyone there? Sam asks. Mr. Roberts, it's me, the weak voice of the older man responds from the other side. Sam was waiting for your call. Mr. Walker, I'm so glad you finally called. So, what have you decided? When do we meet with the check? And I take the little ones? I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts, but I can't accept your offer. A father is the one who raises his children, not necessarily the one who fathers them. You may not be their biological father, but they are still my children. I can't imagine a life without them. Sam replies firmly. Mr. Walker, please wait a minute. Look, can we discuss this again? Please, you don't understand. I love my children. I can't live without them, apologizes Mr. Roberts. I can't live without them either. They are my world, and I don't want your money. Love can't be traded for money. I will tell them about you when they're older. It will be up to them to decide who they choose. But I can't send them with you because I love them and I am their father. Goodbye, Daniel is left heartbroken on the other end of the line. While Sam, with tears in his eyes, looks at his little ones, knowing he has made the right decision. Well, if that's your choice, but could we meet tomorrow? Maybe at the cafe or at your house? Whichever you prefer? Daniel suggested, his tone mixing urgency and hope. I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts, but I have a pretty busy day tomorrow. I'm not sure I can. Sam began to decline, but Daniel interrupted him. But, Mr. Walker, there's more you need to know. I've only shared part of the story with you. There's more to it. This insistence piqued Sam's curiosity, and despite his hesitation, he decided to give Daniel a chance to reveal the rest. They agreed to meet at Sam's house the next day. Daniel arrived carrying several boxes. These are just some gifts for the little ones, sweaters, diapers, and blankets, Daniel explained with a smile as he hung up his coat. He looked towards the empty crib, understanding that Sam had preferred to keep the little ones out of sight. The silence between them stretched, heavy and tense, until Sam decided to break it. So, what is it that I need to know? He asked, with a mix of impatience and curiosity. Anxiety filled Daniel as he slowly took out a worn photo from his blazer. Gazing at it with a somber expression. Mr. Roberts, I don't have all day. Let's be clear and quick, urged Sam. Noticing the sadness in Daniel's eyes, tears began to roll down Daniel's cheeks as he continued to look at the photo. Mr. Walker, the children you're raising are neither yours nor mine. The truth is, I'm their grandfather, Daniel confessed handing over the photo where he posed with a young Mira. But how is that possible? Mira told me her parents had died, she never mentioned anything about you. Where have you been all this time? Sam felt overwhelmed by the revelation. I have been a terrible father. Mr. Walker, Daniel admitted between sobs. After the loss of my wife, I tried to raise Mira on my own. I wanted to give her everything. But when she made bad decisions, I didn't know how to handle it. When she refused to go to rehab, the situation became unbearable. I kicked her out in a moment of anger. 
She was furious and told me I was the worst father in the world. Asking me never to look for her again. I thought she would come back when she ran out of money. But that never happened. And how did you end up here? How did you know about the children and me? Sam needed to understand the whole picture. I learned everything from Amy, Myra's best friend in Chicago. She told me about her marriage, the children. I came as soon as I could, Daniel explained. So these children are from her ex-boyfriend? Sam tried to piece things together. I don't know for sure. Mira had been with several men during that time. She wasn't even sure who the father was. Daniel sighed deeply. It doesn't matter who the biological father is. What matters is that these children have someone who loves them like a father. And that, Mr. Walker, is you. I don't know what to say. Sam felt torn between shock and acceptance. I'm sorry for coming with lies. I was afraid you wouldn't let me meet them. My intention was never to keep them away from you. I just wanted to be part of their lives. I wasn't a good father to Mira, but I want to try to be a good grandfather. Daniel seemed sincere, understanding Daniel's anguish and honesty. Sam decided to forgive the past for the sake of the children. Over time, Daniel became a constant and loving presence in the family's life, mending the mistakes of his past while helping Sam raise the little ones. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.